Why is a female life more valuable in an emergency than a male? Women and children first is called, the Birkenhead Drill, and began during the Victorian era. You can Google it and understand where it came from and why. In my opinion I would put my wife and kids before myself. I think it's just natural I would look around in situations of emergency and naturally want kids. And women in front to ensure safety. Pretty sure it's because guys are generally physically stronger than women. The idea is that men are less likely to die. I suppose. So the women should get out first. Were you in a hostage situation? Women and children generally get used as a stepping stone in the negotiation process. Because women can have children. At least that was the original reason why. And we've just kept it the same since. We had a flood at my uni. Army personnel came and rescued girls in boats right next to boys who had their bags on their heads. And were walking in waist-deep water. They left once the girls were evacuated to higher grounds. The boys were nice. They tied ropes so that others can hold onto them and walk. Put down stones where the water was shallow to help others. Arrange transportation to nearby cities and airports when everything was shut down. Women and children first? Not likely. According to a new Swedish study of shipwrecks, faced with life and death situations. Human behavior tends more toward every man for himself. According to the study's authors, economists Michael Alinder and Oscar Erickson from the University of Uppsala, they studied 18 different maritime disasters, including 16 previously unstudied shipwrecks, between 1850 and 2011. The data included 15,000 passengers and crew members of more than 30 different nationalities. The researcher's aim was to test whether reports of chivalrous self-sacrifice during the sinking of the Titanic were exceptional. Disappointingly, they found that famous images of men giving up their lives as the ship went down are the opposite of what generally happened. Instead, captain and crew tend to look out for their own safety first men on board have a higher survival rate than women and children fare the worst it's not more valuable this mindset is a holdover from our evolutionary past the concept at play here is called male disposability from an evolutionary standpoint men have only been useful insofar as they provide something to someone women, children, or society, whereas women have always been valued unconditionally by the tribe because they produced children. And it took them nine months to do so. The phrase, women and children first, doesn't come from nowhere. Statistically, in a wide range of ethical and life or death situations, both men and women prioritize women's lives and well-being over that of men's. The prioritizing of women's well-being over men's was only a concern in our evolutionary past when things like infant death, women's safety, and maintaining a population were pressing concerns. But these things are just not relevant in a modern society. There are more people alive on Earth today than at any point in our past. And people in developed nations are safer than they've ever been. The fact that this mindset still persists indicates that we haven't done enough to course correct. For it, we didn't evolve to live in big cities, fly in planes, communicate through screens, build large-scale governments, eat modern food, or sit upright all day at a 90-degree angle. Many aspects of our psychology and physiology that led us to be successful a million years ago are demonstrably maladaptive now like prioritizing women's well-being over men's. So googling and reading on the Birkenhead it seems like no one actually says the reason. There is a practical reason more than just morality. The British Navy found that during chaotic evacuations, especially during flooding, people would be pulling against each other to try to get ahead. 
Frequently men would pull over women and children creating delays from the pileups and overall hurt. The chances of everyone. The idea then became that the smaller, weaker people should go first and then the stronger people, men at the time, would then go and if they pulled against each other or the hull they would have the strength that it might not create a huge pileup. Just imagine a flooding ship in the pitch black darkness. Everyone pouring out into hallways desperately grabbing and pushing trying to get out. Women and children often were trampled and overwhelmingly casualties of sinking ships consisted mostly of women and children. The Birkenhead drill aimed to change that. This thought process is a relic of the British concept of chivalry and is actually called the Birkenhead drill or Birkenhead rule, wherein women and children are given first access to life-saving procedures, such as lifeboats, especially when such resources are limited or insufficient to service all aboard. Although it has never been codified in maritime law, it has nonetheless become standard practice during any emergency, especially those of a life and death nature. Oh dear, I thought we had moved on from that. Interestingly, in hospitals we evacuate the mobile first to less mobile. This is so beds and frames don't block exits. Then we use slippery sheets and a harness to pull immobile patients out. Fun fact. When the Titanic was sinking men were pushing women and children out of the way. So women and children first is sort of a polite serving suggestion. You actual mileage may vary. We have to say that so that any women will get out. We all know that principles go out the window in real emergencies. When the boat starts sinking the men will probably just push through anyways. If the crew doesn't just take all the boats first. Statistically very few women and children survive disasters. Men are stronger and essentially beat them to the exits, lifeboats, doors, rescue vehicles etc. This is true for fires, trampling in crowds, airplane crashes etc. The very famous women and children first example of the Titanic was only accomplished by a hardcore captain who threatened to shoot the men clamoring into the lifeboats. Perhaps as social creatures we collectively figured this sucks for the gene pool and decided to protect our reproductively enabled members because without any moral or cultural intervention, very few women will survive disasters. What is a woman? All to do with procreation. You only need one man and 100 women to get 100 babies.100 men and one woman equals one baby. Unless twins etc. Children obviously have more life to live and someone has to care for them. Men in history would never. A woman's life is not more valuable. Society just believes we need protection more than you. That you are self-sufficient and we need others. Edit. I thought my phrasing made it very clear that I am not validating the idea. I am describing the behavior. But apparently not. They shouldn't. It's a holdover from an older time. Many if not most feminists would agree with you. Also, you're operating under a false idea that that is how it happens. When I'm fact, in real conditions like shipwrecks or emergencies, everyone tends to get pretty selfish. And death statistics don't hold up that women and children are evacuated first. So the women and children first isn't actually used often and it isn't even a standard. Most shipwrecks turn into an every man for themselves situation. There have been a few exceptions like the Titanic. But that's not actually the drill. Children, disabled, and the elderly usually go first. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our playlists full of similar content. Epic Heracast is like doom scrolling for your ears. Please like, share, and subscribe.